Thank you, God, for everything. Another day above ground. And we're going to do this uh, one verse at a time, one word at a time. And where I'm going to start, I don't know. We were all over the place uh, today, you know, uh, last couple of weeks. I, I know we, we, we were doing a millennium. We were doing the persecution. We were doing suffering, enduring. Uh, we did the end of time thing, the eschatological stuff. We did perseverance and uh, suffering with Christ. We got a lot of verses on suffering, suffering with Christ. Um, and uh, today I just thought um, we, we, we morph into a little... Uh, flame of fire <laughs> gathering together and um, uh, God will fight for us and uh, along with that gathering together was like you know sitting at meat and uh, things like that so uh, this is what it's on now this page here is is the unite or the gather together and I've got a whole bunch of verses here I mean a whole bunch of uh, words uh, for gathering together, and let me give you that real quick here. In the uh, in the Hebrew, we got uh, three uh, or four. Yeah, it's actually three good ones, and and four having to do with gathering together. Let me put the other one up here. What is it? Twenty two sixty six. Joined together. Yeah, okay, joined together. So this this main one here, this is one of the big ones here. This is um this is Yakad or Yakad means unite or join. Uh that's uh, 3161 in the Hebrew and it's uh, T W O T uh, eight fifty eight. We'll uh we'll read from that um uh, in a little bit. Uh, and that's the um I think that's the verb, right? Uh yeah, that's the verb. And then you got the uh, 3162, which is part of that yakad, um, and that's a masculine noun and an adverb. Uh, it means union or unitedness or together. And um, so it was on my mind, you know, just getting together and uh, gathering together and see how that works out. And then you got something else here, another word. Uh, which is uh, in the Hebrew strong 622. Uh, Asaph means together or gather together or assemble uh, to receive. And that's uh, TWOT 140. Um, let me see if I look at that. Um, uh, yeah, I did look at this. I don't think there was too much in here that I uh, gleaned uh, for our purposes here of coming together. <coughs> Let me see. Um, yeah, we might do some of this, uh, but I want to get into the other one too. And then this last one, which is this uh, 2266 is Kabar which is to couple or couple together with, or to join or to unite. And that's mostly with the uh, with, with, with the curtains in the temple, you know, joining together and coupling. So that's probably why I didn't have it up there too much. But this is all uh, all joining together or gathering together. And yeah, you can probably get some uh, metaphorical things out of this, joining together with the uh, the stuff in the uh, tabernacle and, the, and that. But we're going to put that on the side for now. Uh, and we're going to look at this... Um, and where's the ones in, in the Greek? Let me do the Greek uh, while I'm here. Uh, but I did want to get into the uh, the Hebrew. Um, I got all these pages here. Um, this is kept bound. I was looking at that. Okay. Uh, string. This is the keep. All right. And then the prison. We got that one. Uh, I might get into this, but I doubt it. And that's the prison and the keeper and to be kept. Okay, that's a, that's another study. And then the fetters and the chains and the, all right, tormented and hanged together. That's another study. And, and then we got here. We got gathered together in the um, in the Greek. So we'll look at this one. And there might be, that's the one there. So I had these two together here. So we'll look at this uh, gathering together here in the uh, in the Greek. Uh, uh, soon ago, 
uh, gather. Uh, we looked at a lot of the soon works. You know, we soon is with or together. Uh, soon ago uh, is uh, ago means to bring or to lead or to take with. Uh, so this is soon ago to be gathered together to get, to come together. And um, uh, ago, uh, there, there isn't anything in the uh, theological dictionary. For this, so but we got to go to Ago if you want to go to the uh, theological dictionary. That's not even in there. Okay, so there's no TDNT on this, but there's a bunch of verses uh, uh, being gathered together with that one. So that's that's the 4863 Sunago, and then we got this uh, Epi Sunago uh, to be gathered together with. We got Epi, of course, is the uh, upon or on. Um, epi is uh, preposition means on or upon, and the 4863 is sunago, so it's epi sunago. And we just looked at that, and then you got this other one here, which is uh, sun anakime, and that's in the theological dictionary. We'll look at that. I was looking at that earlier, uh, I might pull something out of that. There might be a, a, a a paragraph or two we can pull out of this one here and there's a lot of good verses on that meaning to uh sit at meet with or to sit together sit down with uh soon anakime of course it's the soon and anakime which is another good word uh and these all over in theological dictionary three starting on page uh, 654 if you're taking notes i know you are and that's anakime. So ana, of course, uh, means by or a piece or in the midst of ana. When you put ana in front of something, it means it gives it a heavier meaning. And uh, kime is uh, to lie or to be laid, to be set, to be appointed. Um, so where they got that at meat from? Sit at meat. I guess they, you know when you sit down with somebody, you're gonna you're gonna break bread with them. You're gonna be at meat with them. So that's where you get the ana and the kime. Uh, to sit at meet, to be a guest, or something like that. So those are these are some good words, and we'll look at that a little bit. And then this other one that come together is uh, soon erkomai, and we know erkomai means to come. Uh, erkomai means to come, and then the soon is is with. So it's come together, come with, go with, uh, to assemble together. So those are good words. Soon erkomai. That's uh, forty nine oh five. In the uh, in the Greek, soon erkomai, it's the soon and erkomai together, and then this one here is a couple of verses, and it's uh, sus suzegnumi, suzegnumi, forty eight oh one means to join together, uh, and zugos means to pair or to yoke. Uh, and it's the same as zugos, which is a pair or a, a pair of balances or a yoke. You know, so we got suzegnume to join together. And there's two verses here, so you might as well read them in Matthew 19 and 6. He says, wherefore, uh, they are no more twain, they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, suzegnume, uh, suzegnume. Let not man put asunder. And the same thing in Mark 10, 9. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. So that's the Sunnah. Maybe we'll put that on the side. And then this other one called together uh, is uh, Sun Kaleo. We know Kaleo is called. Uh, Kaleo to call. And Sun Kaleo is to call with or to call together. Sun Kaleo. And I didn't look at this in the theological dictionary but um you know you got uh, how many verses here you got eight verses having to do with call together so let me read them real quick and see what happens with this uh get this out of there he says uh, talking about the soldiers and the soldiers led him away into the hall called praetorium and they called together the whole band all right and then um in Luke 9, he says, then he, he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over devils and to cure diseases. And then in Luke 15, 16, 
he says, and when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Uh, rejoice with me. What's that? Rejoice with me. Rejoice is sum caro. All right, the caro is rejoice. Uh, and sum caro, rejoice with. I love the way they taught these words together. With me, for I have found my faith. Okay, and uh, when he had found it, he called her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. And this is the one that lost her, uh, her uh, what you call it, out of a hair, her, 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 her coin or something. Uh, it's supposed to be her uh, a dowry or something. And that's in the same chapter. It's Luke 15, 6, Luke 15, 9. Um, Talking about, uh, let me put this together here. Uh, I see unto you likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than the 99 just persons which need no repentance. Well, they, they probably need repentance, but, you know, when, when, when somebody goes astray, you know, usually, and, and then when they come back, most people of the of the flesh will think, well, well what, what's so great about that? You know, you, these guys didn't go astray, so why are we concentrating on the one that did go? Because that's the one that was lost, and now they're saved. You know, now they came back. So that's why it's a big deal when the one uh, falls away, but then comes back, rather than the ninety nine that you know was staying there faithful. And then he goes on. Uh, uh, with another parable about the woman. He says, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. You know, forgetting about the 10 pieces that she already has, one was lost. She's got to get it back. And when she found it, she called her friends and her neighbors saying, rejoice with me for I have found uh, the piece which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, and this is the moral of the story, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So that's just the moral of the story there. Um, you know, forget about the 99. Let's not forget about them, but they're, they're always there. You know, and the one that went astray and came back, like, like the prodigal son, you know, when he came home, uh, what did his brother say? What do you do? What are you making all of this stuff here for you? I've been laboring together with you. I never left you. I've been working for you. And all of a sudden, this bum comes home, and, you, and you're giving him the fatted calf and everything. You're putting jewels on him, and, and I'm, I'm with you all this time. And he turned around and looked at me and said, hey, son, you're with me all this time. Everything I have is yours. This is your brother. He was lost. He's come back. So that's why we're rejoicing over one that came back. So that was good. And then uh, also uh, in regards to this word, uh, sum kaleo, meaning to call together. Usually when you call some people together, you want to, you know, do something. Uh, and Pilate, when he called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people. So Pilate's doing some calling together there. And uh, let me see, 521X. And when they had heard that, uh, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and he called the council together and all the Senate and the children of Israel and sent to the prison and had them brought. And this is when they uh, they had put them in prison and uh, called together. OK, and then three Paul together to chief you. So this is just calling people together. All right. So that's a. Uh, but this, this other thing, when, I, when you're talking about uniting and joining together and breaking bread and rejoicing together, and that's, those are good words, you know. Um, and we looked at this, so Eric and my call come together. Okay, so I want to get back to that, um, since we're staying on this little theme here with come together and united. Uh, let me see what page I was on here. What's this? Uh, the fetters, okay. So this one here about joined, and um, I just wanted to read this quickly if I could. Uh, let me see what this one was together. Let me see. Okay, excuse me. Yeah, like I said, I'm scattered and I got a few things, uh, but I want to put this here 
I'm gonna have to see if I got enough room for it. Yeah, I might have to take something out. <laughs> but I was reading this early, and it was some good stuff in here. Um, let me put it on another page so we can have room, so I can uh, uh, zip around a little easier. If you'll uh, bear with me here, 1361. We'll do this, and we'll do this. No, that's not it. Oh, man. What was the number? Let's see. 131, There I go being dyslexic again. Uh, 3161. <laughs> 1361. That's funny. That's not even it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let me do this. And 858, TWOT 858. There we go. So oh, we'll do this. I got that line going through there, and that's cool. So this is uh, Yachad or Yaqid, yeah, to together united is. And in the beginning, it talks about the only begotten a lot. You'll see the uh, monogenes, uh, which is the uh, only begotten son. That's the word monogenes. And the Septuagint uh, translated to ag agapitos means agape and uh, it means beloved so that's the beloved or the only begotten so that's uh, basically what that's talking about in the first part here um and this here oh uh, that's monogenes okay and then um uh, theological theologically uh yachid is important as it impinges on new testament christology uh, the word basically, basically refers to an only child, a uh, person without uh, kith or kin, or an only son subject to military military service uh, under extenuating circumstances, like in Jephthah's daughter is described accordingly, about he was his only child, in uh, Judges 11, and then um, in Amos 8, 11, it talk, 8, 10, it talks about, uh, and I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring up sackcloth upon all the loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning of an only son at the end thereof as a bitter day. So when you're talking about monogenes or your only son. Um, and so that's just talking about the only son and the uh, monogenes. So let me pass that and get into um uh, he's they're still talking about only son here when isaac uh is yachid or in the septuagint it's agape, agape, agape tos. Uh, obviously an only child is especially dear to parents uh, it is tempting to see here the idea of incomparable or without parallel anticipating the messiah in his unique relationship to the father who claims him as ho huios muho agapatos, which means my beloved son. And he says that in uh, Mark uh, 3.17, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, ho huios muho agapatos, agapatos, I don't know if I'm saying that right, agapatos. And then uh, this is my beloved son. And so this expression finds its equivalence in John's Ho monogenes huios. Mano means uh, only, and genes is like a kin, or uh, so it's uh, only one, only son, uh, the only begotten. Mano genes, only begotten. Uh, and that's the unique son, and you'll see that in John, and, and all these, these verses in John 114, John 118, the only begotten son. Uh, John 3.16, of course, is gave his only begotten son. And 3.18 uh, talks about his uh, only begotten son of God. And the first John 4.9 talks about the only begotten son. So that's the monogenes uh, in John a lot. So the, the supreme act of, of, of God is evidence of his love for the world. This was prophetically typified by Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac. In Psalms 2220 and Psalms 33, 35, 17, Yahid equals monogenes. Uh, it's uh, variously translated my darling or my only life, referring to the uniqueness of the soul. 
and and this uh, uh, there is thus warrant for the idea that the term monogenes in John does not refer to derivation of the son from the father as in human families, but to the uniqueness of love of the Trinitarian relationship, the doctrine of eternal generation of the son never meant such derivation. Indeed, it was adopted against the Arian theology that the son only had a beginning and was made. And we know that's not the case. Uh, another use of Yahid is a solitary or isolated or lonely. It is used of men. When David cries out, he says, turn me, uh, turn to me and be gracious unto me, for I am lonely and afflicted, afflicted in Psalms 25, 16. And God expresses his concern for such in Psalms uh, 68, 5 and 6. A father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, uh, is God in, in his holy habitation. Uh, God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with change, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Uh, so it's, he, he expresses concern for such, you know, a father of the fatherless. Um, Dehud, by vocalizing the MT, um, Yahed as Yahid in Psalm 68.11, translates uh, Yahweh, uh, teach me your way that I may walk faithfully to you alone. Teach my heart to revere your name. And in uh, 88.17, he they came round about me daily like water they accomplished me about together uh he then comments that the king pledges fidelity to yahweh alone since he alone is god as affirming the preceding verse uh generally yahid or yahad describes the community in action uh doing things together uh so that's basically what it uh, what i was getting at uh but all of these things come together in Psalms 34 and 3, he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And that's what we do all the time. He says in Isaiah 52 and 9, he says, Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord had comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. So get together, that's what we do. We break bread, we sing, we, we, we pray together. Um, the community extols the praise of God together. This unanimity, especially for the people of God, is beautifully underscored by the Septuagint use of homo thumadon, and that's to be of the same. Homo is the same, thumadon, I guess, uh, something about the mind or emotion. So it's it's with, yeah, it with the same emotion or with the same mind, homo thumadon. And that's what we're talking about, we wanted to be of the same mind. Uh, unanimously, uh, Demosthenes urges uh, the people to set aside personal feelings, replacing it by homo fumidon, uh, to resist Philip. Hence, uh, personal feelings are not to be considered in unity. So we have in unity, and there, there, there's that verse uh, about the, uh, talking about the, uh, the oil that runs down uh, Aaron's beard. You know, it's, the, it's great to have unity with the, with the fellowship. I forget the verse right now. Uh, and the New Testament stresses the inner unanimity of the church as in romans uh, 14 4 and 5 where it says um for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope now the god of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to christ jesus so that's like-minded one towards the, another that's probably that homo uh, Humidon or some kind of a synonymous word there. And um, also Acts 1.14, uh, where he says, let me put it up here. Acts 1.14 says, these all continued with one accord in prayer. And with one accord is this, uh, here it is, homo thumidon. 3661, let's put it up here quick, 3661, and there's all the verses here, the same verses that I got here, right, 512, 525, yeah, so we'll close this out and leave this here, and then uh, when, the, when, the, when the day of uh, Pentecost was, was fully come, they were with uh, one accord in one place, so these are all coming together. 
uh, and Acts 2.46, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness. One thing, I'm going to look at that, eat their meat with gladness. I don't think that's the same word as the... Um, the one where, that I was looking at earlier, eat their meat with gladness. No, that's not it. Uh, Metalamano, the trophy. No, it's different. Uh, we'll get into that a little thing a little, a little bit later about eating meat together. Um, but this homo fumadon, that's that's cool. That's what we got to be. We got to be together. Uh, and Acts 4.24, he says, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voices to God with one accord. And said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And in 5.12, he says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Uh, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Uh, and then in 7.57, he says, uh, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran on him with one accord. And those were the scribes and Pharisees who were. Uh, or uh, we're about to stone uh, Stephen uh, for what he was telling them the truth. So Stephen is like the first martyr, you know, as far as the uh, the Bible is concerned. And and Acts eight six and, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing miracles which he did. So that's a good word. Homo thumadon. Um, Tdnt five one eighty five. And you'll find that uh, a unique Greek word uh, uses 10 of his 12 New Testament occurrences in the book of Acts helps us understand the uniqueness of the Christian community. Homothumadon is a compound of two words meaning to rush along and in unison. Uh, so Fumadon means to rush along and uh, homo, of course, is means in unison. Uh, the image is almost musical. Uh, a number of notes are sounded, which, while different, harmonize in pitch and tone as the instruments of a greater concert under the direction of a concert master. So the Holy Spirit blends together the lives of members of Christ's church. It's a great word, homo fumadon. Homo together or of the same. And uh, humadon is, of course, is, comes from the thumos, which is wrath or fierceness. Uh, thumos. Right. And uh, finish this up. Here we go. So, yachad, unitedness as adverb when accusative and union together, all together, also adverb yada, meaning together, alike, both appearing all together 134 times. The Septuagint primarily translate with homo thumadon, with one mind unanimously. So, if you went into the Septuagint, and you put that that number 3361 uh, or whatever it is for Homo Thumadon, all probably all of these verses with this uh, Yachad would, would show up. And uh, I didn't do that, but uh, you can do that if you want. And this other thing, let me close this. I need some room here. Make it easy to see. There we go. All right, um, which one was I on here? Yeah. Together. I want to get into the, here we go, this one here. And so that's that. And this other one here is, uh, that's 140. I don't think that's the one I was looking at. I was looking at, uh, yeah, let me look at it real quick and see what we got here. I can take this out. All those verses for uh, 3161 and 3162. Take them out and we'll leave this here. This Asaph here. There's 200 verses here. <laughs> Actually, 100 and, yeah, 200 verses, 187 times it's in the Bible. So we can't read all of these verses. But uh, we just want to get a, an idea of what this uh, gathering together is. Uh, I'm looking for for our purposes of gathering together, you know, as the flock and the in gathering harvest, uh, gathering collection together, and they got together. Uh, you know, we had the, they have the Passover, the Pentecost, and the in gathering. So that's a gathering together, and I think that's covered in here. Um, 
in the Nifal, that's just a type of verb, he says, is translated, be gathered by death, assembled, be removed, perish. The pu'al is another type of verb, is rendered, be gathered, whereas the hithafal, or hithpeal, it's another type of verb, has the force of gather themselves. Uh, the verb has the same meaning in Ugaritic, which is just another language. You'll see Ugaritic a lot. And then the, the verb occurs 190 time, 199 times. Uh, Ugaritic attests a cognate root. The principal words for gather are Asaph, which we just, uh, um, that, that's what we're looking at now, and Kabas. Um, Kobas is the other one that, um, let me see, did I look at that? Hold on a second. Kobas, Kobas, Kobas. <clears throat> no, I don't have it here, but it was one of the lesser ones. Uh, transitively, uh, the verb under consideration denotes to bring together, to collect, and intransitively to come together, to assemble. Uh, the phrase gathered his father's. Uh, it's frequently used uh, to die or death. Uh, when you gather with your fathers, you're, you're, you're dying or you're dead. Uh, there are some scholars who suggest that this phrase intimates, albeit indistinctly and vaguely, an early belief in life after death with recognition of loved ones in the afterlife. It may, however, be a euphemism for death without clear theological import. Uh, the transitive force can denote a gathering of a host as in this Psalms 27, 10, uh, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Okay, so that, has, that sounds like is there's some kind of life after death there. So here's the word here, take me up, is Asaph. And then the other one is Isaiah 52, 12, where he says, uh, uh, for ye shall not... Go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your re reward. So he's going to be behind you. So, and it, there's another thing talking about, uh, I think that might be one of the verses I have for him fighting for us. Let me see if I got that on there. Uh, yes. 50, Isaiah 52 12. If I don't have it, I should have it. I'll, maybe I'll jot it down here. Isaiah 40, no, da, 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 51, so I'll put it in there. Isaiah 50, because that's kind of like a verse that, that means he's fighting for us, right? He's got the re reward. He's helping us out. Isaiah 52, 12, so I'll put it down in. We might get to it later when he's talking about him fighting for us, but we're, we're, we're gathering together right now, you know. And important use of the word is connected with the harvest. Uh, for which the usual word is kasir, since Israel was an agricultural people, the harvest or the kasir held for them great significance. Uh, you know, Genesis 8:22, he says, "While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest." And here's the word harvest is kasir, means harvest. Okay, uh, hold heat summer. Uh, winter, day and night shall not cease. And then this uh, Genesis 45 and 6, for these two years has the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall be neither earing nor harvest. And that's Joseph uh, telling uh, Pharaoh about the, uh, is it? Yeah, uh, the seven years of uh, plenty and then the seven years of famine. Uh, but the, that's the habit, the harvest. That's all he wants to talk about there is the harvest. So events were counted from or related to harvests. I mean, the whole world revolved around the harvest times, the, uh, the wheat harvest, the, uh, the barley harvest, the, the fruit. And that's, that's coming on. Those are the three. Uh, so events. Were, so we got um, all of these verses here. We can't get into all of them. But these are all referring to the harvest and the rain and what, and what happens in between. And... Uh, so we'll, we'll look at some of them here. The three main feasts of the Jewish religious calendar answer to the three harvest seasons. And you'll find that in Exodus 23, uh, 16, and Exodus uh, 34. So, and, and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors of the field. So that's at the end. So that's, that's the September, October which is the end of their year. Actually, 
you could say uh, it, it started in April or March, April, and it ended in uh, in September, October, because that that goes from from uh, Passover, which is March, April, and then you got the uh, the, the uh, Pente Pentecost, which is uh, fifty days later. Uh, that's May, June. And then you have the in gathering, which is uh, July, uh, which is uh, September, October. Um, so, uh, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. That's the the Pentecost of first fruits of wheat harvest, the first uh, of gathering of the year. So, uh, I think this particular one breaks down when when they, they each happens, and then you have also the early and the latter rain and. Uh, I used to know that which one was early and which one was latter because it was two rainy seasons. Uh, one came in the cold months and one came in the warm months, and there was nothing in between. So, uh, but, and they had to get those rains. And if they didn't get those rains, then they didn't have any harvest. Uh, so, the feast of Passover was the time of the barley harvest. So, here we go. So, you could, you could relate Passover with the barley harvest, uh, and that's the poor, you know, the poor people. And then the Feast of Pentecost with the wheat harvest. So that's the good. That's the uh, wheat costs more than barley. Uh. And so that's uh, 34.22. Uh, and you shall observe the Feast of Weeks, sort of the first fruits, the wheat of harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. So it's talking about the three feasts right there. Uh, and the Feast of Tabernacles at the end of the year came during the fruit harvest. So one was barley, one was wheat, and the other one was the fruit. So Passover, Pentecost, and, and Tabernacles. So between barley harvest and wheat harvest, that's between pa Passover and Pentecost, uh, uh, fall a few showers which increase the wheat field. Amos 4, 7, he says, and also I have withholden the rain from you uh, when there were yet three months to the harvest. So he's talking, right here, you can look at this and say, okay, he's talking about the time in between Passover and Pentecost. And it, and I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So he can do that. And I don't know if that's the early rain or the latter rain. I, I used to know, I get them confused sometimes, but there's an early and a latter rain. I think the early rain comes in the uh, the winter months and the latter rain comes in the spring months, but uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, from the time of wheat harvest until the fruit harvest, there's another rain. Uh, no, the harvest, there is no rain. So between uh, uh, Passover, barley, and Pentecost, wheat, you got the rain. And then... Uh, from the wheat harvest, which is Pentecost, until the, the the harvest, the fruit harvest, which is the ingathering, there's no rain. So Second Samuel 21:10 and Jeremiah 5:24, uh, and and Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth and spread it for her upon the rock from the beginning of harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven. And suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. So she was looking at that for a while. <laughs> and Jeremiah 5:24, neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord of God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. Uh, in this season, He reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So um, I have to find out when is the former and when is the latter. I mean. Um, let me see, appointed weeks, um, talking about the former and the latter. See if Paul's got it here. Uh, giveth rain, uh, which nothing could subsist. Giveth rain. Uh, let me see. Uh, the, former, the, people, the, the, the former and the latter, okay. He means not the former or the latter part of the year, but according to their seasons of sowing and reaping, the former to prepare the ground for sowing and the latter to prepare the corn for plumping and ripening. Now, but there was a former rain and a latter rain, and I'm just trying to figure out when it comes. Uh, so excuse me for that. All right, here we go. Here we go. He's got it. Jameson Fawcett Brown. He says the former falls in the middle of October to the beginning of December, and the latter 
or the spring rain. See, that's why I got confused because I thought the, the former was in the spring and the latter was in the winter. But the former is in the winter and the latter is in the spring. So the latter or the spring rain in Palestine falls between harvest in March and April and is essential for ripening the crops. And that's... Um, Close this, close this. Then he talks about the rain here in Deuteronomy 11:14. Then I will give you the rain of your land in due season, the first rain and the latter rain, uh, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil. And Joel 2:23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So that's where you can figure out how the, uh, the difference between the two rains. So they get two rainy seasons, actually. And then they have nothing uh, between uh, the wheat harvest and the fruit harvest for, for some reason. I don't know. Uh, so the Mosaic law surrounded the harvest with definite laws on gleaning, first roots, and the prohibition of harvesting a crop for which they had not labored. So you, <laughs> you don't work for it. You ain't going to harvest it. So the Giza calendar sets forth the harvest season in ancient Israel. Olives were harvested from the middle of September to the middle of November. And I think this is in the back of the, uh, the Thompson chain. They give you a list of all the different types of uh, gatherings, uh, harvests. You got the, you know, the wheat, the barley, the oil. And, and this one talks about the olives. So the olives were harvested from the middle of September to the middle of November. Trees were beaten with long sticks. Uh, flax was harvested in, in March, April uh, by cutting it off at the ground and then allowing the stalks to soften, and that's called redding uh, by dew or, or, or other moisture. And in April or early May, barley harvest uh, took place with wheat harvest in May and June. So the, the May harvest, the May barley harvest is the Passover, and the uh, and the June wheat harvest is, is the, uh, the Pentecost. And so the harvesting of figs, grapes, pomegranates, and summer fruits was during August and September. So like, you know, in, in the Passover, you got the, uh, the barley and, and then you have the wheat. And over here, we're talking about the fruits. So you got the bread and the fruit here, the bread and the wine. Uh, there are figurative uses also. Destruction of a harvest indicated God's punishment. We know that. The time of harvest often denoted the period of destruction. Uh, the time of harvest where, which probably when, when Jesus was talking about the fig tree, he says it was the time of barley harvest. It means that the, it was supposed to be picked at that time. So that the, har the time of harvest often denotes uh, a period of destruction. The, the joy of harvest uh, designated great rejoicing. The harvest of the Nile denoted an abundant ingathering, and a harvest that was passed indicated a loss or irretrievable opportunity. So it's, it's past time. It's too late <laughs> for the harvest. Um, a derived use of the verb occurs with the meaning of withdraw or remove. When Saul heard the Philistines' commotion in the camp, he ordered the priests to withdraw his hand from the ark of God. And then you got a sip is the ingathering or the harvest of grain and fruits. Uh, this now appears twice in Exodus 23, 16 and Exodus 34, 22. The passage uh, deals, the first passage deals with the three pilgrimage feasts in Israel. And the second uh, 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 treats the same feast in summary fashion. So these are the three feasts. Uh, the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field. The Feast of Ingathering, which is at the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors in the field. And that's the fruit there. So you got the, the bread and the, and the, and the fruit. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, a, a sepa, a collecting, gathering, collection. Um, we'll be gathered together. This noun is a hapax legomena. Uh, that means it's only one time in the Bible. Hapex legamenon, Isaiah 24:22, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days they shall be visited. So gathered together, asaf, uh, as prisoners are gathered. Here we go. So you see this one time in the Bible, 
which it says esefa uh, together, gathered together, and you see it's one time. That's what hapex legomena means. If you ever see that again, you'll know what it means. Hapex legomena, only one time. I forget what, exactly what it means, but lego is is word or saying, and hapex means something else. So. Just know when you see that, it means it's only one time in the Bible. Uh, appearing in Isaiah's so-called apocalypse in connection with what some exegetes believe is an eschatological revelation. Uh, at least the resurrection is in view. Isaiah 25 and 8, he says he will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from off the earth. Uh, f uh, for the Lord has spoken it. So that could be a, an eschatological saying. Uh, it could also not be, but uh, we can read that into it. I mean, and then the as asap soup means a rabble, uh, collection of money. All right. So that's good. That was that little word there, uh, asap, to gather together. And we got a little history on the uh, on the harvest and the, when those things occur. So that was good. And um, there was something else here. This gathering uh, together. Uh, I think that was. The, let me give you the. the uh, I gave you the Greek words here already. But this one here, I would just strum through real quick with the uh, uh, soon uh, 4873. Where is it? Here it is. 4873. Let me put it on the end here. Hold on. 4873. Here it is. Okay. Uh, and these three are together. See, this is 4873. This is... Um, Sun and a kime. It means to sit at meat. And the word here, kime, uh, anakime, means to sit at meat. Right? And then this other one, 2621, is kata kime, means to lie or to sit. They all mean to lie or sit at meat, to lay down. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit on this. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy with it because it's a whole, uh, well, it's a short one. Uh, but what I was reading was this, this little paragraph here in uh, the Theological Dictionary 3, volume 3, starting on page 654. Uh, if you got that, I can't call it up here like I can with the TWOT, but, you know, for some reason they don't want you looking at it here. Something to do with copywriting or something like that. So, um, in the New Testament, this is uh, anakime and sun anakime. Uh, the first, the verb first means to be laid up, uh, especially of the votive offerings, and the anakite, uh, something rests on, and finally to recline at a table. So, in the New Testament, it occurs only in the Gospels in the sense of to recline at a table. Mark 14, 18. Um, let me see which one it is here. Yeah, this is it here. Mark 14, 18. All right. Uh, and they sat and did eat. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And then 1614, he says, afterward, he appeared unto the 11, uh, which, you know, all the events that happened <laughs> between there uh, and this one, he says, uh, and they sat at meat and he upbraided them for their unbelief and the hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he had risen. So one is, is before the uh, crucifixion and one is after the resurrection. So they sat at meat. And then uh, Matthew 9, 10, uh, and it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. So 
that's why I always had trouble break, I don't know, you know, breaking meat with people or sitting down to eat with people who are unbelievers. And you're going to have people sitting down with you eating who are unbelievers. And it doesn't mean that you, you can't sit down and eat with them. It just means that you, if they don't listen to you, then you can get out of there. But, um, you know, Jesus sat down with them, uh, with, with the sinners, uh, publicans and sinners. And then 22.10, he says, So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So he's talking about, you know, go out into the field and gather everybody together. And then 11, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And what do you think he told him? <laughs> Let's look at this. Oh, yeah. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless, so he didn't say anything. Uh, then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So bind him. I was going to get into a little bit of binding here. Um, where he says, bind him. So there's a whole bunch of uh, verses on Dio uh, that I wanted to get into that have to do with uh, um, yeah, well, I don't want to get into that right now, but I uh, just want to let you know that that's there. And then um, we got uh, 26 7 and 20 uh, and there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat uh, I guess that was the what's her name Mary who, who bought the uh, the box in and then 26 20 he says now when even was come he sat down with the 12 so these are all verses having to have to do with sitting down at meat uh, and having fellowship, anakime, sit at meat. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of them because there's a whole bunch of them here, you know. Well, there's only 13, so we, we, we just read what they got. And John 6 11, uh, let's do John 6 11. Uh, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as they would. So this is one uh, one of the miracles he did with the loaves and the fishes when everybody was sitting down. And then in uh, 12, 2, I don't see it here, John 12, 2. Uh, John 12, 2, there it is. Uh, 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 there they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. So sat at the table is that uh, Sun Anakime uh, sat at the table with him. And then 1323, uh, now there was leaning on Jesus's bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. And uh, we know about the uh, triclinium table. And if you're leaning on somebody's bosom, um, We'll, we'll, we'll read that a little bit here. I think there's something that explains it. Uh, I was reading it earlier today. Uh, it might be in here. Um, uh, and then 1328, he says, uh, um, Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake unto him. So 1323, 28. Uh, Simon Peter therefore beckoned unto him, uh, beckoned unto John that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake when Jesus said that somebody's going to be, betray him uh, and then lying on Jesus' uh, then he then lying on Jesus' breath said unto him Lord who is it and Jesus answered he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it and when he dipped the sop he gave it to Judas Iscariot the son of Simon and after the sop Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Nobody knew. No man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. 
for some of them thought because Judas had the bag, like he was the treasurer of the group, uh, that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need against uh, the feast or that he should give something to the poor. Uh, he then received the, he then having received the sop, went out immediately, immediately, and it was night. So when the sop entered him, Jesus, Satan entered into him, and Jesus told him, he says, go ahead, get out of here, do what you got to do. Uh, go and betray me. Um, so that was that. So, um, and then Mark 2, 15 and 22, he says, the custom, here he goes, the custom of reclining at table on cushions was common in the time of Jesus among the Jews, and other civilized Mediterranean peoples. And they got a whole bunch of stuff down here. All right. But only those who were served could recline. Women, children, and slaves usually ate standing or in other ways. In contrast to the diacono, let's look at Luke uh, 22 7. I'll give you these words here to give us it. Luke 22 7. Luke, here it is, 22.7, he says, uh, For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. So he was serving them as the diakonos, what's the word, diakonos, let me see here, uh, servants, uh, so diacono, dia, diaconeo. So, in contrast to the diaconeo, uh, the anakimenos, the anakimenos, the person that's it, is one who enjoys himself because he can afford it. So he is greater. The one who sits at meat. Uh, in, the, in it was customary to lie on the left side, so that the right hand would be free for eating. And you see. When you see pictures of the triclinian table, I think most of the time they're lying on the left side and the, and their right hand is free to eat. And like you, if you're lying on your side and you want to talk to the guy that's behind you, you lean back and you put your head back and you talk to him. So that that's you're leaning on his breast. That's what it means. It's not that stupid picture that Leonardo da Vinci put with with John has got his head on on Jesus' shoulder. You know, it's stupid. Anyway. Uh, so uh, reclining at the Passover uh, was meant to signify that after the exodus, the Israelites were free men and not slaves. Uh, it was thus regarded as essential, as uh, Mark 14, 18, Mark 14, 18. And you know that when they were in Israel, uh, I mean, when they were in Egypt uh, at the exodus, <laughs> they they had to eat with their standing up, with their loins girded, ready to go. Got to go. Got to go. Um, uh, yeah, okay. That's one more, 14, 18. So, Anakime, Antikime, uh, let me get these words here. I didn't look at these. And the, this means to confront them, to be opposed or to be hostile. All right, we're not going to get into that. Um, and this apokime, uh, this basically means to lie or to be laid, then uh, to be laid up so that it can be counted on, uh, to come upon someone as destiny, and finally even to be despised or rejected. And that's in Luke, uh, Luke 1920. Look at this real quick. As long as I got this here, it's only a couple of pages. Luke 1920. Luke 1920. Uh, I'm going to look at the word here. Uh, and another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. So kept laid up is probably this. Yeah. So it's apple, apple kime. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different words for this kime. You got the apple, you got the anna, you got the anti- uh, you got the kata, you got the epi, you got the para, and peri. So there's all kinds of different uh, prefixes, excuse me, prefixes before this uh, kime. And it all mean different things. So um, 
So the 1920 means to be laid up, uh, the napkin, and uh, what was the number? Hold on a second. 606, I think it was. 606, where is it? Laid up. 606. I'll throw 606 up here. And we'll get uh, a couple of verses here. How many verses are there? 606 is four verses. All right. And then Colossians 1.15. Um, one five for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel so the hope is laid up for you and then uh second timothy 4 8 henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness uh, which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them that love is appearing imagine having the confidence to say something like that and then uh, Hebrews 9, 27, in the sense of there is a, a waiting man, he says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So that's the uh, apo kime, to lay up or to appoint. And then you got the epi kime, uh, to lie, to be laid over, to be ordained, to, to oppress in the new temper in the New Testament, it is, it is used in the sense of to lie on, as in John eleven thirty-eight. Let me get this out of here. Uh, eleven thirty-eight. Look at this word here. John eleven thirty-eight. Eleven thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. See what the word is here. Therefore again, uh Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a grave and a stone lay upon it. So lay upon it. Uh, it's epi kime. Let's see how many verses we got here. Epi kime. Uh, to press upon, to be instant, to lie upon or over, to rest. And there's seven verses here. All right, and then 21 and 9, he says, uh, and soon as they will come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and the fish laid thereupon, and the bread. Uh, this is probably after Jesus was risen, and then that's the 21, 9, and then to beat upon as the storm in Acts 27, 20, uh, and neither sun nor stars in many days when Paul was in the, in the ship uh, there appeared uh, in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was taken away so they're in stormy weather and uh, it's talking about uh, the tempest laying upon them so that's the uh, epi kime and then the crowd and finally to be imposed uh, legal ordinances and then constraint so but I, I i was looking to 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 get you know coming together and being together uh but all of these uh these words uh, have other meanings but they're all connected like i said there's one three four five seven eight, there's like 10 different words for this key may to lay upon but i was looking for the one to the, you know to come together at the sit at meet with and then um, you got the katakime. Might as well give you the katakime. And that's uh, John, wait, 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 Mark 130. So we'll get this out of here. That's, so that's 1945. And that's the, uh, the epikime. You see the suffix, uh, the prefix epi there. And then you got the uh, prefix on this one, which is apokime. And then we're going to look at the kata kime, uh, which is Mark 130. So we'll, we'll get that with we'll all of the prefixes here. Mark 130. Uh, 130. We'll see what this is and how many there are. Uh, but Simon's wife, mother, lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. Uh, Mark 130, uh, lay, oh, 2621, is Katakime, 
to have lain down, to lie down, prostrate of the sick. So 2621, 2621, and we'll get these, there's like uh, 11 verses here. We're not going to read all these, but that's the word, kata, uh, kata kime. Uh, also means to sit at meat too. So, uh, and it came to pass that uh, as Jesus sat at meat in the, his house, many publicans and, and sinners sat also together with you. So you got two of the words in here. You got uh, Jesus sat at meat uh, in the house, and that's katakime, and, and many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus. So that sat also together with, that's the 4873. That's the soon anakime. So you got two of the words in there. The kata and the, uh, and the soon anakime. All right. And then uh, Mark 2 4. Uh, uh, okay, the page Jesus said at meat. 2 4. Sick of the palsy. All right. And then you got para kime. I'm just giving you these. We're not going to go through all the verses, but uh, as long as I got you here, para kime. Um, Romans seven eighteen. Get this out of here. Romans seven eighteen. I'll give it to you. Seven eighteen. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So where's the parakime here? Uh, in me, uh, parakime, that is in my flesh, dwelleth, where is it? No good thing, for to will is present. Here it is. 4738 uh, and that's that's para to be present para of course is to be of from or by or beside or near and of course kime is to lie para uh, and then um, let's put it in context here he says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> can we, can we you know, agree with that? Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Sin that dwelleth in me. Oike uh, imoi. Seven, eight. What was the word I'm looking at? Parakime. And 21. Oh, 21. I got to go to 21. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, for then, for I find then a law that when I do good, evil is present with me. So this is this Paul and his struggles in the, in his mind. You know, he wants to do good, but he can't. And uh, if he does bad, he knows it's the evil that's in him, and he knows he's got the inner man and the outer man. The outer man is evil. The inner man, uh, I must uh, decrease. He must increase. Um, I, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Is present with me. Parakime. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And that's what we're, we're trying for. We know we got that inner man. We know we got that outer man. We got to get rid of this flesh. We got to get rid of the outer man. And then one more, we got the, uh, you know, we got the peri kime. There's a lot, like I said, how many, I don't know how many. Uh, well, let me put the peri kime here. Uh, Mark 9.42. 942 probably doesn't have anything to do with our study of coming together or being together, but maybe it does, uh, but it's still a word that's that's in here. He says, and whosoever shall offend uh, any of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And that's 
Perry to be hanged around. So Perry is around. Uh, here it is to be hanged about his neck. Forty twenty nine is the number, and it's. Uh, how many times here? Yeah, like five times in the Bible. Perry Kime. Uh, talking about millstone rang around the neck, uh, bound with chains. Uh, I am bound with chain. Um, Hebrews 5 2. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is encompassed, uh, is encompassed with infirmity. Uh, twenty or twelve, twenty twelve and one. He says, "Wherefore, seeing we are all we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses." So all these things have to do with, you know, compassing about, coming together. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And we all have that sin that does so easily beset us. One we can't get away from. And we're working on it, you know. And uh, let me see. I've gathered. Did I look at this? Epis. Oh, this is another one. Soon I go. Uh, can we get into this? Uh, no, but there's one more pro here. There's one uh, pro. Kime. And that's... Um, I'm gonna have to find a page here. Yeah. Okay, the last page here. Yeah. No, that's the flame. I want to keep that there for the flame. We do a little flame if we get to it today, which I doubt. But this, uh, I didn't think I was gonna spend this much time on this coming together here. Uh, Pro Kime, uh, Jude seven. Jude seven. Uh, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh was set forth as an example, suffering the venge vengeance of eternal fire. Now, it's probably giving themselves over or set forth an example. Let me see which one it is. Uh, giving themselves all that fornication is all about in like manner set forth as an example. Which word is it? Um, the New Testament means to lie before all eyes in Jude 7 or on the day that the person to come to be before someone. Uh, to be before someone. This is pro Kime. Pro Kime. Huh. That's at Berkomai. I'll find it. Maybe you found it already. <laughs> pro Kime. Here we go. 42.95. There we go. 42.95. Pro Kime. Uh, to be set before, be first, be set forth. To lie a place before a person or a thing. Prokeme, 4295. Uh, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according that he hath not. 2 Corinthians 8.12. Uh, Hebrews 6.18, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong constellation who have fled for refuge to lay upon, to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Prokeme. What's the two immutable things? That's the promise and the uh, and something else. Uh, wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so, so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race set before us. So there was, there's two of them in there. We just looked at that. Uh, looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and sit down at the right hand of God, right hand of the throne of God. So this is the pro Kime, and we read Jude 7. So that was a quickie on the, uh, well, it wasn't so quick, but that was the Kime, and the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 prefixes associated with that. And the, the main word is uh, 2749, which is Kime. Uh, and there's 26 verses there. Kime to lie. And you can see all those verses there. If you want to look it up, get your uh, concordance and the uh, word study concordance, and you can look, look up all of these 2749. There's 26 verses there. So that's the main word. And so that's a little uh, coming together, uh, lying together. And there was another set of words here uh, having to do with this. Um, kept, oh, this is the one that was bound in the jailer. And then uh, come and follow me, come uh, bound with them. A lot of good words here, man. Uh, kept, tereo, philoso, uh, tere uh, that's good. Uh, and then the Fed is uh, gathered together here. We, we did the 4863. We did this. No, we didn't do the sunago. Uh, but, and then this is, I would have gathered epi sunago. So you got the ago, uh, which is the main word here, uh, which means to bring or to lead, or to go, to lead, to take one with, and it's, it's 72 verses, 72 times in the Bible. So we can't go through all of them, but I just want to give you the ago, which is the main verb, and all of the uh, the prefixes that are before it. And uh, surprisingly, this isn't in the theological dictionary. I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, it's a major word, ago. Uh, and then you got soon ago, to be gathered together, to gather together, and then you got uh, epi soon I go to get it together with. And um, this one we looked at already. All right. And what's this one here? This is uh, soon erko my. Okay, we'll come together. And it's 32 verses there. 4905, soon and erko my. Erko my is a big word. Um, so, yeah, they got a theological dictionary on this, 666, Erkomai, means to come. And that's a big one. It's over 600 and some odd verses, 643 verses there with the Erkomai. Uh, but soon Erkomai is in there. Uh, so we can't look at all of that today, but it means to come together. And that's what I was looking at, all the stuff that we're, we're coming together, gathering together, and uh, that's what we do here. And that's uh, another word is uh, koinonia. You know, um, needs to have fellowship. You know? uh, <coughs> so now I go. Um, and like I said, there's it, it, no theological dictionary here, so it's hard for me just to just to run down verses. And like I said, there's 62 verses here. Uh, Got it together. Uh, um, let me see if I, I read no gather. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Um, talking about the uh, the wheat and and the tares, he says, uh, uh, "Let both grow together until the harvest." And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, "Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn." Soon I go. What's this gather ye together? That's probably the other word we just looked at. Uh, Matthew 13 30. Uh, gather ye together. 4816. Sulelo. Wow, I didn't see this one. Let's look at this. Sulelo. Uh, sulego. So you got the soon and the lego. Lego means to say or to speak. So, sul lego. Uh, means to gather, gather up, gather together. 4816. 
I found another one. Let me put this up here. 48.16. And let me write it down here. On the Greek side, 48.16. S. S U L L E G O. S U L L E G O. All right. That way. Um, to men gather grapes of thorns, gather them up. That's why you gather up the tares. You also you root up also the wheat with them. So he says, yeah, don't 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 pick them up together. Let them all grow together. And then when the time comes, so that's that's Matthew uh, 13. And um, if you want to look at that in, in context, you, you can look at that whole thing here. He says, um, uh, and, he, and he spake many things uh, unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower uh, went forth. Where is it? So it went forth to sow, uh, and he sowed some seeds, and some and some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And then verse six, he says, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Who hath ears, let him hear. Uh, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them... It is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever, whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. So uh, the vessels of wrath, whatever little they have is going to be taken from him. And the vessels of mercy, you got a lot of stuff, you're going to get more. You know, the... Uh, uh, the preachers today could take these verses and run with them and see God wants you rich. Uh, therefore I speak unto them in parables, parables because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they, do they understand. And you can run across people all day who see and see not, and who hear but hear not. And they're quoting verse after verse, and they're just twisting and wrenching it and, and not knowing what it means. And you can explain it to them and tell them what it means, and they still say, no, it doesn't mean that. So these are the ones that he's talking about. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of, of Isaiah, who said, uh, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's 15, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with the heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So he don't want them healed. He don't want them hearing. He don't want them understanding. Uh, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. But verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them. They heard about them. They knew the promise was coming, uh, but they haven't seen it. And to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. So here he gets into the sower. He says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way that which is sown in the heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. And some argue that this is a vessel of wrath, but I don't know. I used to think it was a vessel of wrath, uh, the one that falls by the wayside. And then you have the other one, but he that received the seed in the stony places the same is he that heareth the word, and anon he receives it with joy. So, you know, if you're hearing the word, you have to be a believer, right? Uh, and you receive the word with joy. Uh, yes, he had not root in himself, uh, but doeth for a while. Uh, for when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. And then you have the other one. 
where he says, he also that received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. So that's not necessarily a vessel of wrath there. But he that received the seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understands it, uh, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some and a hundredfold and some uh, sixtyfold. Um, so the, the word we're looking at there is, uh, I forget the word we were looking at, uh, gathered together, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Surago, gathered together. And it's in a couple of verses in Matthew uh, 13, 3 and 13, 30. If you want to go down a little further, he's in another parable here. Uh, but this this one here, I don't want to get it, get caught up in it. But uh, um, so he says, when, when, when anyone heareth the, the word of the kingdom in verse 19, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches the way which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth the seed by the wayside. And like I said, there, there's arguments for both ways of, of, of thinking that this might be a vessel of wrath or a vessel of mercy. But I know the others are vessels of mercy. Uh, this one could go either way, but uh, I don't know what Jesus meant here. Uh, but this 13 and 30, this is another uh, parable he put forth about the uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto man which sowed good seed. Uh, but while men slept, his enemy came and he sowed the tares among the wheat and went his way. Uh, and when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then also appeared the tares also. So the servant, in 27, the servant of the householder came and said unto him, sir, uh, this thou uh, sow good seed in any field, and, and from whence hath it tares? And he said unto him, An enemy hath done this. And the servant said unto him, Wilt thou uh, then that we go and gather them up? And he says, No. He says, But nay. He says, Let lest while you gather the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. So you know the tares are the uh, the vessels of wrath. And the wheat is, is the vessels of mercy. So he says in 30, he says, let both of them grow together. And that's 48, 85. Let both of them grow together. With another one. Oh, that's the Hapex Legomena. Sun Oxano. <coughs> Sun Oxano. Grow together. The course to grow together. And the word is oxano is to grow or to increase. So it's to grow together. Soon oxano. And it's one time in the Bible. 4885. Let me throw it down there anyway. 4885. All right, quick. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just caught my eye when I saw that grow together thing. Yeah. Um, where was I? Uh, let them grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. So what's this? Gather ye together. Gather ye together. Sul, sulego. Okay, that's the, one we're, that's the word we're looking at. Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So, and then and he goes on to other parables. But this is the sul, sulego. All right. Uh, no, that's Sunago. Okay. So that, I mean, there's so many words. I get I get confused sometimes. Uh, so that's the, the 1330. And then he's got another one here. Uh, another parable. Uh, again, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. And then, uh, for where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And there's 60 some odd verses here. We can't go through all of them, but you get your uh, concordance, uh, word study concordance, and you can look this up. This 4863, uh, Sunago. Uh, where's the other one? I got it. I wrote it down. Uh, yeah, we'll look at that some other time. But today, I think we're done for today. But. I, I didn't get into all the stuff I wanted to get into. I didn't think I had anything for tonight. But once you start looking up words, um, 
this is where it takes you. You just bing, 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 you go all over the Bible with this stuff. So we're going to end here. And we're going to thank you, God, whew, for bringing us together. Like I said, one word at a time, one verse at a time. And uh, we just just scratch it in the surface, man. We just uh, itty, itty bitty little steps. And uh, we thank you for this, uh, for this fellowship and for this word of study. Uh, we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you, John. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, John. Awesome. Who knew, huh? Amen. It's, it always amazes me, you know, like I'm saying, where am I going to go tonight? <laughs> and we, we, wind up, we wind up going somewhere, you know. Oh, let me turn the recording off. Okay. Thank you, God. <laughs>